Good evening and welcome to Sips and Sympathoma Medics. I'm Whitney Sims and I'm going to be giving you all some tips and tricks for using Sympathoma Medic drugs in practice. First tip is don't drink while you're practicing medicine. Some examples of these drugs include albuterol, apriclonidine, dobutamine, epinephrine, diphenephrine, norepinephrine, and phenylephrine. And then also they include amphetamines and also some non-prescription drugs like meth and cocaine. Some clinical indications for these drugs include anaphylaxis, shocks, cardiac arrest, complete heart block, and cardiopulmonary bypass recovery. They can also be used to cause vasoconstriction that's not corrected by volume replacement. And they can be used in ophthalmology for the treatment of glaucoma and to help prevent preterm labor. The sympathomimetic drugs mimic or enhance the actions of endogenous catecholamines of sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the patient's fight or flight response. <clears throat> the therapeutic effects of the drug depends on the receptor that it's activated. So these, this drug class can actually be used for a wide range of things. So if it activates alpha-1 receptors, it's gonna cause excitation of smooth muscle. If it activates beta-1 receptors, it's gonna cause excitation of the heart. And if it activates beta-2 receptors, it's gonna cause relaxation of smooth muscles. So they can really be opposite, so it's important to know what drug activates what receptor when you're prescribing these medicines. Sympathomimetic drugs are absorbed through the GI tract, and they're metabolized in the kidneys, and they're also excreted through the kidneys. So if your patient has a history of kidney disease or only have one kidney, then these drugs should really probably be avoided except for emergency cases. <clears throat> and precautions and contraindications for sympathomimetic drugs would be patients with coronary artery disease, a dysrhythmia, or heart failure. The side effects of these drugs, the prototypical findings of a person, person using sympathomimetics are that all systems are up. So the patient will be diaphoretic, tachycardic, tachypenic, hyperthermic, they can be anxious and even agitated. In the extreme cases, the patient can experience hallucinations and sometimes even have seizures. And these are really seen more in the non-prescription sympathomimetics such as cocaine and um, meth, but just the agitation and the hallucinations are not very common with the other sympathomimetic drugs. Some adverse reactions of sympathomimetics that can cause the patient to have a hypertensive crisis and they can also cause the patient to have severe dysrhythmias. And <clears throat> these drugs are not compatible with beta blockers, tricyclic antidepressants, antihistamines, or ergot alkaloids. Whenever um, you prescribe a patient in a sympathomimetic drug, the patient's pulse and blood pressure has to be monitored closely when using these agents because they're at a high risk for hypertensive crisis and severe dysrhythmias. High dose administration requires the patient to have intra-arterial blood pressure monitoring, so they're gonna need an ART line. So this is really not something that's common in the primary care setting. This would be more ER or ICU. And beta blockers should be avoided in patients who are suspected of cocaine abuse or if they have a known history of cocaine abuse because the interaction between the drugs can cause unopposed alpha adrenergic activity and can put the patient at high risk. The administration of these drugs is super important to be very careful with because the drugs mimic sympathetic adrenergic stimulation. And like I said, they produce hypertension, excessive cardiac stimulation, and cardiac arrhythmias. And for these reasons, most of these drugs are only used short, for short-term cardiovascular therapy with clinical supervision and monitoring. So again, an ICU or ER. Um, the majority of sympathomimetics aren't gonna be prescribed in the primary care setting, especially for home use. Most of these medicines are more emergency practice or sort of last resort medications for patients that are critical, except for epinephrine, which can be prescribed to patients for anaphylaxis. <clears throat> so it's really essential to teach patients the proper use of an EpiPen and the importance of having more than one EpiPen. So they really need to have two EpiPens in case they go home, they get stung by a bee, and they, they know that they need to use their EpiPen, but the first one misfires. So it's really important to teach patients to have that second EpiPen in that, in that horrible circumstance. And it's also, this gives you a chance to really provide the patient's family 
some education. The patient's family really needs to know how to use the EpiPen in the case that the patient loses consciousness after being exposed to an allergen. And for you as a provider to dig a little deeper and see if they're still in school because their teachers need to know how to use it as well as their coworkers wherever they're working. And the main thing that I want you to know about sympathomimetics is in the primary care setting, epinephrine is going to be the main drug that we're prescribing for patients with anaphylaxis. The other drugs are not very common for us to use in the primary care setting, but they're still important to know about and, and the to know if the patient needs to be sent to the hospital for the use of one of these medications. But epinephrine is the drug of choice for anaphylactic reactions of all types, and that is super important for us to know. Thank you so much for being on the show with me. I hope you have a great night.